Welcome back to Information Technology Fundamentals. In this lecture, we're going to cover security best practices. In this lecture, we're going to uh, look at the basic principles for hardening a computer against attack. We're going to uh, distinguish between the different types of malware and how anti-malware software is used. We're going to look at spam and phishing threats and finish this lecture with uh, an overview of ins the uh, installation of software patches and how to update your software from secure sources. There are a number of things we can do to secure our devices, starting with something known as device hardening, which is a set of policies that make uh, computers and network appliances more secure. Some options for hardening uh, include a screen lock or a password change, and generally changing some of the default settings both on your computer and your networking devices to uh, ensure that someone off the street can't get into them by using well-publicized uh, information. We also want to install antivirus or anti-malware programs, make sure our software is patched and up-to-date, make sure we're using uh, passwords where we should and that none of them are default or weak passwords, and we want to make sure that any features that we're not using are actually turned off as unused features frequently become a vulnerability partially because nobody's watching them. And uh, on computers, especially that you buy off the shelf, you want to remove any unwanted or unnecessary software. Right now, if you went out and bought a computer, it's going to come with a whole bunch of pre-installed, what I would call bloatware. We want to make sure we remove that before we get started. Uh, a, it's going to make your computer run faster. And B, if those uh, that bloat wherever has a vulnerability, you may not know it either. So it's best just to get rid of it so it's not going to cause us any harm. So what is a computer virus? Well, it's a program that's designed to replicate and spr spread among other computers. Uh, they can be classified in a few different ways. Uh, first of all, we have program viruses, which uh, uses a code that insert themselves into an executable pro, uh, program or script. We have macro viruses that affect things like Microsoft Office and Adobe, uh, where you can have basic programming built into them. So people will take that ability uh, to run macros in those programs and make them into a virus. And then we have worms, which are memory resident viruses that replicate over a network. Uh, maybe it uses email or exploits a fault in other software programs. Well, any of these um, viruses are going to have a payload, uh, which may perform a number of different actions, uh, including displaying a silly message, uh, corrupting or deleting our data, or even damaging files or installing another program uh, that would be spyware or adware typically to uh, in, that would infect our computer. So how are these different viruses delivered? Well, the most common way is through email. S something around 60 to 70 percent of computer viruses uh, come through email. People opening attachments they shouldn't or clicking on a link they shouldn't. The other way is through auto-run media, although that's not as popular anymore, but if you've got a flash drive or a CD that's set up to no matter what, when you plug it in or insert a CD, it automatically runs the first program on there. They could easily have uh, malware as the program that's auto-run, and of course then you have problems. And then we have application exploits. An application exploit is um, most commonly uh, a virus that is infecting a website. Somebody goes to download the application. It has um, a virus built into it. Of course, when they down download it and install it or run it through the web browser, it's going to go ahead and run that exploit. So some other types of malware we can define here are Trojans, spyware, and ransomware. 
A Trojan is a little bit different from a virus in that it does not necessarily try to make a copy of itself, but it's a program that pretends to be something else. You think you are getting a picture that looks like it has a picture extension, but the reality is it has a virus uh, so it looks like something it is not. Spyware is simply a program that is installed on your computer. You may not recognize that it's even on there, but it's capturing information and sending, sending it to a server somewhere. On the slide here, we see a, a picture of actual spy, which is some spyware, and it's monitoring a, another program here. It's capturing keystrokes, you can see over here on the right. And the most popular growing type of malware is ransomware. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't. Typically, it comes as a email attachment. It downloads to a computer. It encrypts the entire hard drive, making it unusable. And then they request Bitcoin to send you the key to unlock it. Uh, entire government agencies, the city of Baltimore, Atlanta, New Orleans, and many others have been infected by this. And have uh, uh, it shuts down the whole network for a period of time. So operating systems have many vulnerabilities. A vulnerability is going to be defined as a design flaw that can be that can cause an application or a security system to be circumvented or that will cause the application to crash. Uh, they can usually be exploited in quite specific circumstances. Because of the complexity of modern software, it's impossible to thoroughly test every scenario before the software is rolled out. And once it's rolled out, uh, bad actors go ahead and look for exploits. They frequently find them. Uh, sometimes the exploit will cause the application to crash. Sometimes it will uh, capture information or make the, uh, the uh, computer vulnerable for other attacks. So patch management is the uh, best way to ensure that you have the most up-to-date software and that you're protected from known vulnerabilities. So how do we go about preventing all these malware infections? First of all, we protect our data by regularly backing it up and making sure that the backups are secure. Second, we apply patches and updates as they roll out. We install and update security software, so make sure we're using the most current version of um, our anti-malware. We scan files as they are being added to our network. We limit the amount of users that have administrative privileges on our network, and we seek to control file execution on all devices on our network. These are gonna help us prevent malware infections. So what is antivirus software? We've heard that term a lot of times, I think people refer to it, but uh, let's go ahead and get a good definition so antivirus software is software that can detect malware and prevent it from executing. Uh, the primary means of detecting it are by using known patterns, uh, which would be called definitions or signatures. Um, we have other types of malware that look for specific types of behavior in order to flag something as malware. The problem with the signature definitions is that only works for known software. We have to have uh, another plan to deal with software that is not known or zero day. So we look for different types of behavior. Maybe we have a large amount of data leaving our network and we want that to raise a red flag. Uh, malware and antivirus software is going to be divided into personal, stuff you use at home, and enterprise. They work uh, generally differently, a little bit differently. Personal software is really set up to, to um, protect one individual computer. Enterprise suites then uh, work across the whole network. All the different pieces and parts will talk to themselves, talk to each other across the network. When we have uh, anti-malware, we want to go ahead and schedule scanning. Now, the problem with scanning is that it uses a lot of computer resources. So we have to schedule this at times when the uh, computer is not under, under heavy use. So a lot of times it's done in the evenings after scheduled work hours. And then we have to decide how often. Do we want to scan it every day? Do we want to scan it once a week? And of course, that all goes by use case, what, what should be done there.
Uh, but all these anti-malware software should not only scan the hard drive, but they should schedule or should scan the memory as well, as some malware will can reside in the memory. On access uh, scanning uh, means that when a file comes into the network, either through email or through a USB drive, that it is scanned before the user is allowed to open it. When anti-malware comes across an anti uh, a malware, piece of malware, it has to be decide what to do with it. Now, uh, typically we want to try and delete it right away if it's possible. Uh, when we remove malware, we're going to call that cleaning. But we also may decide that we want to quarantine it or not allow it to go anywhere. Put it in a uh, spot so that we can analyze it later. So if we need to do that, we're going to call that quarantining. Some malware will not allow us to use the quarantine or cleaning features of the antivirus, and we may have to manually remove some of this persistent uh, uh, malware from our computers. Windows Defender is the built-in anti-malware software in Windows. It works in conjunction with the Windows Defender firewall. The two are designed to work together. It also uh, monitors app and browsers and will alert you if it sees um, malware. Generally speaking, Windows Defender works pretty well. And under most tests, it's working as well as the other free um, anti-malware offerings from other vendors. Spam, we've all probably gotten plenty of this. That's just unsolicited email. Your, your email address comes on some list. It gets sold around. People send you offers and all kinds of crazy things through email doing that. Unfortunately, in spam, you're also going to get potentially hazardous content. So in spam, you should never click on hyperlinks or open any attachments from anybody you're not sure of. And that will prevent a lot of the malware. But a lot of people believe when they get the email that says, you want $100,000, just open this attachment, that it must be true. Um, they're still fairly successful, and that's why we still have spam. A phishing email is one that is designed to look like a, legit, a legitimate email. So it's supposed to design like it came from your bank or from someplace else. Inside the phishing email, there's going to be a link or perhaps an attachment, but usually it's a link to take you to a website where then either your username and password perhaps is uh, captured through the web page. And then that information is going to be used to access a system or perhaps even do some type of identity theft on the victim. Most email right now has anti-spam filters and the ability to flag something as spam or filter junk mail. But uh, no matter how good these are, there's always some that sneaks through as the bad actors are constantly coming up with new and inventive ways to get email through. Ensuring that we obtain softwares and drivers from legitimate sources is really important to securing our computer environment. So what would be a legitimate source? Well, the vendor. So any vendor or app store that they have. If you want to purchase a Microsoft Office, you would go to Microsoft's website to locate it. Authorized resellers. Uh, there's quite a few of those around for different products, so you might go to them directly. Uh, original equipment manufacturers. So if you need drivers, you'd perhaps go to the ASUS website to get those, or in the case of printers, to HP. Uh, and they may even have managed service providers that you would work with as well. Abandonware is just simply software that's no longer being updated. If that's the case, they become vulnerable over time to all kinds of malware. So if you're using a piece of software that has been essentially abandoned by the manufacturer, um, you probably want to find a replacement so that it is up to date. And the last thing we can do is make sure that the software that we download is uh, signed code. If that's the case, then you guarantee the integrity of what you downloaded and you can be sure it's not infected. Patch management is a critical step for any kind of security on a system, and it really refers to uh, installing updates into the system 
if when we're talking about security, we're not so much worried about adding additional um, uh, additional features. What we want to make sure that the patches we download are fixing bugs or security vulnerabil security problems, uh, vulnerabilities, and exploits that have been documented. Uh, if we get a big uh, batch of those, that's called a service pack. So if we look at Windows over time. Uh, maybe every month they roll out uh, some type of update or to fix a bug or a security problem. And then after, uh, you know, 12 or 18 months, there's quite a few of these uh, patches that need to be downloaded. So they kind of collect them into one and call it a service pack. And you can download the service pack as opposed to a whole bunch of patches. Starting with Windows 10, Windows has... Um, uh, change its update policy. It used to be possible in Windows 7 and before that you could essentially turn it off and only update it when you felt like it. Windows has discontinued that ability. It now automatically updates and uh, especially when we're talking about security patches, this is really important. They had a lot of people were not updating their Windows with the newest uh, patches for security. The people who were not updating ran into a lot of problems with uh, vulnerabilities and malware. So Microsoft said, we're going to force users to update whether they're ready to or not. Basically, you have some ability to configure the scheduling, but after a certain amount of time, Windows 10 is going to uh, force the update onto the users. We've got a few different things that Windows is going to update. It has some regularly ones that are that are daily. Twice a year, they Windows introduces new feature updates and functionalities into their software. And if you are in one of their service channels, you can get the updates uh, sooner. Uh, for a big, big uh, company, that's really important because they can then have a chance to test it in a controlled environment before they roll it out to all their computers and ensure that it doesn't uh, break anything in their computer environment. Most software that we install has regular updates. Some of them um, will let you update for free. Other companies, when they provide an update, you may have to um, uh, pay for that update. And that's going to be with applications. All antivirus products have a regular update, usually daily, on the virus definitions and or the driver for these hardware will be updated periodically. There usually is no set schedule. Usually it has to do with um, when new hardware comes out, they need to make new drivers or if they find a vulnerability. So we looked at the basic principles for hardening computer systems against attack. We looked at the different types of malware and anti-malware software. We looked at the difference between spam and phishing and looked uh, reviewed the importance of software and patches and updates from secure sources.